Hi there guys, so I'm going to be doing a quick video this evening on uh, England's game against uh, the United States earlier on today and seems as it's the 4th of July, I got my uh, original 13 colonies American flag out this evening just to mark the occasion, so I'll just tilt the screen back a little bit just so I can prove that. There we are, the original 13 colonies flag. So, brilliant game today, absolutely superb game at Twickenham, um, lots of fans back as well, I think it was like 10,000 fans. Um, we're back to watch England today, which is brilliant. You know, been starved of any crowds for about two years now in rugby, and it definitely made a noise, it made a difference as well today. It was quite sunny down in London as well, so it made for a really entertaining game of rugby. And um, God, we had over 70 points scored. I thought it was going to be a bit of a blowout at one point for the for England. You know, England have just got so much depth at the moment. Um, it's absolutely frightening, really. You know, it's all black levels of depth at the moment, and. Um, it, it did show in the overall score line. Um, so just to review this, so what we've got, England 43, United States 29. So first of all, I'm going to talk about um, England, and then I'll focus on the United States afterwards. So England, really impressive um, first half. Um, I, I quite look, like the look of um, Joe Cocker, the singer. He was really influential in the game, uh, carried well. He, you know, he, he looked. He looked every measure um, a class international winner again. And um, previous to the World Cup, he was really destructive, a really powerful winger coming onto the ball. Um, wasn't really getting exposed too much, getting getting the ball in his hands quite a bit. Um, he did. He did score quite a few tries, if I remember rightly, in the World Cup against the USA. Um, and he was back to do it again today. And it's brilliant for him because I think he's had he's had a, uh, quite a, a while out with a bit of a knee knee injury as well um, last year and in 2020. So um, it's really good for him to be back. And he looked pretty he looked pretty awesome in fairness today. But not just him. There was plenty of other English players I thought were really good. Um, I don't like the guy, but Ellis Genge is a I think he thought he really stepped up as captain today. He was pretty good. Um, bar one knock on, I thought he was. He was excellent, really physical, good in the scrum, carried well. You know, got all, made his gain line. You know, you know, he led by example today. And um, I thought that he was there every time when the boys scored a try. He was cheering him up. You know, as as much as you know, opposition fans may say they dislike somebody. Um, like you know, in the camp, I bet he's one of the most popular boys there. And you can't ask for anything else than that. You know, ultimately he wants to do well and do well for England. Can't ask more than that if you're a rugby fan and an English rugby fan as well. So he was absolutely brilliant. I thought in the uh, back row, Sam Andrew was back to it again. He was pretty good. Uh, Lewis Ludlum was all right. He was he was all right. Um, I, I, I noticed obviously that I thought Don Brandt had started the game at eight, but unfortunately I thought it was Don Brandt. It was it was Chick, and he was he, he was pretty good as well. But um, I am looking forward to seeing um, Don Brandt play at eight uh, when if England play picking against Canada next week as well. But for me, I thought the, the stars of the game, apart from uh, Joe Cobb the singer, I thought the stars of the game were the halfbacks. Um, Harry Randall was just ridiculously good at nine. Um, uh, I've been saying for about two years for Wales to um, just name him in the squad and to uh, get him in there if he wanted to play for Wales. But um, I thought in fairness to Harry Randall, you know, he played 20s and the 20s level rugby for England and chose England North Wales, which is fair enough, you know. Yeah. Plenty of players have done that and that's 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 where his allegiance is, you know. Um, he's just a fantastic nine and it would be you know, and there's a lot of competition in Wales, a lot of competition in England as well, but you know, I think he's more likely to um, to get some game time uh, with England and he suits England's game time, uh, game plan as well. Uh, particularly he's very, very quick and uh, he, He's, he's got brilliant feet. He likes to travel the ball. His pass is snappy. And uh, one of the tries in the second half proved that he was able to travel and cut out the first two defenders um, near the ruck, attract defenders, and then in the sort of uh, D and E channel where somebody was running on a short line, he was able to expose the third and fourth defender then who were fixated on the um, incoming, incoming runner. And he scored a brilliant try under the post as well. But he set up a couple of other tries as well, in fairness to him. He set up Marcus Smith try in the second half. Um, he set up, um, set up, set up a try in the first half as well. There was a kick forward, I think. And uh, Cocker the Singer scored that one, if I remember rightly. Yeah, he, he, he was, he was, he, he brought the tempo. Um, 
we gave Warren the best, when you see Ben Young said his best, is more you saw Harry Randall today, which was bring the tempo up, you know, don't let the opposition have any sort of, uh, you know, don't give them a breather whatsoever. If they've lost a scrum, they've lost a scrum. I don't think they're going to lose a try because they've lost a scrum as well. That sort of, you know, boot on your neck mentality, I thought he brought was really well, uh, really good, good today. But yeah. Marcus Smith as well was excellent. I thought he ran the back line really effectively. And in fairness, there was a lot of disruption as well with England's back line. Um, Max Malins, unfortunately, I think, I don't know whether it was a, a collarbone injury or like an elbow injury, but he fell awkwardly. Um, provided the assist for the first try for England, which meant that they had to bring on um, Omega. And uh, then, you know, later on in the second half, then Ollie Lawrence had a, a bad collision with full-back for America. It was absolutely superb, actually. I thought he, he was only on the field for the first half, but he was really impressive, uh, as safe as anything in, in, in the back line. Um, but that was a, an unfortunate collision, and um, they both went off. Uh, Overall, though, England will be really, really pleased with their performance. They scored quite a lot of tries, seven tries in total. It did sort of disintegrate a little bit when the, you know, the the newer caps came on from say 55 minutes onwards. Um, the second half, I mean, if you look at the score, so England in the first half went in, they went in 26-3 up, which I thought was fully deserved, and it could have been even even more than that. Um, it, it reminded me the first half an awful lot of the Wales Canada game, but in fairness, the United States are a lot more competitive. Have got a lot more depth, and you know the, the conditioning is obviously, you know, as, as you watch the game today, if you've seen it, is very superior to Car- to Canada's. And um, I thought all to, all credit to the United States, they come back and they won the second half, 26-17, 26-17. They beat England in the second half. Um, you know, the more the England, uh, sorry, the United States scored 29 points to took and still lost. Which is, if you told them that before the game, they would have, they would have thought, Jesus Christ, that's a, that's a, that's gutting. So they'll, they'll lose the game, but they'll take it because to put 28 points on England, score four tries, um, four good tries as well, I would say, really organised, um, was superb for the United States. Uh, from the first minute, they looked a well-organised, well-conditioned and dangerous team. And in fairness to the United States, the best sort of credit I can give them is that it reminded me an awful lot of watching Japan in the World Cup in 2019. Now, England are a superior team to the Scotland team that Japan played and, Ireland, and, and the Ireland team that Japan played in the World Cup. Even today with their second string, they're a superior team. And the USA... I thought they fell away a little bit between uh, 15 to 15 minutes to 30 minutes. Um, they were a bit too soft there, I thought. I think England had shocked them. It was, it was just try after try after try. Um, but in fairness, they stuck it out to USA, and especially second half, they, they come out and, you know, they, they, they punished England with the driving ball. They were able to get to the 22 quite often. Um, they scored long range tries, uh, like Dyer's try. The last one, I thought the, the boy that came on in the back row, the, the seven, uh, Gerber Ways, is it? Um, he scored the third try. I thought he was superb. He was, he was like a, he was like a Hamish Watson, just, just sort of like hitting, hitting people like a pinball, and just bouncing off players left, right, and centre. He was pretty impressive. And in fairness, you know, it has to be taken into, into account that the USA were deprived of um, uh, Adrian McGinty. Who is by far away their best player um, at 10. And AJ McGinty was arguably one of the best 10s in Europe last year with um, uh, Marcus Smith, who played for England opposite, you know, would have been playing opposite him if, if AJ McGinty had played. Now, I don't think really that the results should shock anybody who's been watching the USA over the last, say, two or three years. I didn't think that they put their hand up well enough in the World Cup. Um, particularly in that pool, they didn't, they were sort of a bit up against it to put some results together in the pool. I think, you know, when they had a, they had a pool of France, Argentina and England, you know, they were unfortunate that they couldn't maybe get one or two wins under their belt in the pool to give them confidence. But I think that, you know, over the last few years, I mean, they, I know that there was a bit of a blowout when they played the Old Blacks back in 2018 and 2019. Um, they have improved massively. They beat Scotland. Albeit the Scottish second string Scottish side, they did beat them though. 
you know, that's in the record books. Uh, what I can see for the United States now, and particularly there's talk of the USA and maybe and or Canada hosting a Rugby World Cup in maybe 2031. Uh, I think that in order to, you know, in order to sort of marry that up, like Japan has done, you could use the World Cup as a bit of a catapult into the sort of top 10 now of World Rugby for the United States. Because we're the best one in the world directly, they're just nowhere near competitive enough in the Six Nations. They, I can't even consider them to be a top 10 nation at the moment. They play. Japan are firmly the top 10 nation at the moment, uh, despite losing to the Lions and despite losing to Ireland yesterday. Um, they, they are top, they are serious outside in Japan. And as are the best compliment I can, I can give to the United States is that they're on that track as well. You know, they've obviously supplemented their team with quite a lot of talent from um, residency purposes. Um, there's a lot of talent though coming through the MLR. Um, and that, I think the best, sort of one of the best credits I can give to the, the MLR is that the, the boys that were performing this year, last year in the MLR, that have been given the USA Eagles duty today, I thought they did very well. And um, they were winning collisions. Uh, you know, from what I saw, very, you know, first three scrums, I think they had every decision in the scrum. Uh, they won their own ball in the lineups. They kicked very well, counter attacked very well, very organised. It wasn't, it wasn't um, you know, sort of like two phases, and then we go back to having a rugby like Canada were against Wales. They were very, very well drilled, the United States, and uh, credit to Gary Gold for that because he's a good coach as well, and I hope. You know that they, they, they stick it up at the moment because, in fairness to the USA, the way that they play um, and the way that they play today, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have wanted Wales to play them. Uh, put it that way, I think Wales would, would have maybe beaten them as well, but not not as uh, you know. I know the scoreline maybe it reflects a little bit differently for England here, but I thought the USA were, were, were full credit for their points that they scored, and um, you know to, to lose by 40 to England at home, you know, when you were played for two years since the World Cup, so I, thought, I think that any any of the USA squad would have taken that, and I think, you know, no, you know, from what I, I watched the programme, they said they had less than four or five days really build up to the game, you know, that's like barbarian stuff, you know, you, you give give these boys two weeks prep, three weeks prep, and, you know, you can imagine the level of competitiveness that they can give you, same as Canada as well. So all credit to the USA. I was very, very impressed with them today, and I'd be very interested to see what they do against um, Ireland next week. Can they bring it again? Can they make it as competitive as Japan made it? You know, can, do they even sniff an upset? We never know. If there's a red, if Ireland get a red card and USA are playing like they done today, you never know. Could even upset Ireland. Um, probably wouldn't put my house on it, but you know that's. Anything, anything's possible. Uh, USA rugby is looking pretty, pretty good. And I was very impressed with them today. But overall, England can take away, you know, a lot of new caps, and the boys had a good run out. I think Eddie Jones has, has given opportunities to the boys that have been sort of been knocking at the door, uh, you know, for the last two years now. Harry Randall, particularly, and Marcus Smith as well, and some of the boys in the pack. You know, nobody can say anything. Uh, Good, good day's work for England. Second half, you know, plenty to improve upon for England. Um, USA, excellent result in the game. In context, um, they'll be happy with their day's work. Go on to Ireland. Keep sort of improving now. And let's just see where you end up, boys, because, you know, you are looking at a pretty good rugby outfit at the moment. And um, I think, you know, for the sport to have a strong United States of America team, would be absolutely amazing, you know, what a market, you know, you, that you can tap into for rugby, you know, like Japan has embraced rugby, imagine if the United States, you were able to, I know there's a lot of competitiveness with different sort of sports in America, but you give that team, like Japan had, you give that team four or five results, and a, and a, and a giant killing result against maybe a Wales, or an Australia, or something of that nature, against France maybe, that sport will take off in that country. And I hope, fingers crossed, that they get the Rugby World Cup in uh, 2031 and everything's back to normal so I can travel over there as well. Uh, that'd be awesome. But 
brilliant. Um, I'll be doing a couple of other videos in a second. Uh, I'll just do the one against uh, Ireland versus Japan as well. But excellent game of rugby today. Really enjoyed that. And uh, happy Independence Day.